Summary of the Notebook by Nicholas Sparks Noah Calhoun, who is now 80 years old and lives in a nursing facility in North Carolina, talks about how his final days have been filled with feelings of isolation and even anguish at times. According to most people, Noah's life has been pretty normal, but he says that having known perfect love is enough for him. Noah walks through the cold halls of the nursing home to visit a woman patient's room. She barely notices him as he sits down next to her, opens a small notebook, and starts to read to her. Now is the day that Noah hopes a miracle will happen. In October 1946, the story jumps ahead in time. Noah sits on the porch of his huge home in New Bern, North Carolina, as dusk falls. Noah is proud of the work he's done on the old farmhouse. A reporter even came to talk to him about it and take pictures a few weeks ago. A simple man, Noah likes to kayak, read poems, and play music with his neighbor Gus in his spare time. But all the while, Noah longs for a love he lost. In 1932, he spent a passionate and loving summer with Allie Nelson, a young woman whose family came to New Bern for a few months. After becoming sexually aroused by each other, Noah and Allie broke up at the end of the summer. Noah wrote Allie a lot of letters, but she never replied. He hasn't seen or heard from her since. Allie comes to New Bern from Raleigh the next morning to see Noah and tell him that she is going to marry the rich lawyer Lon Hammond, Jr. Recently, Allie read a story in the newspaper about Noah's newly remodeled house. Ever since then, she hasn't been able to think of anything else, even though her wedding to Lon is coming up in just a few weeks. Allie came to New Bern pretending to be an antiques hunter. The story then shifts back to Noah's point of view as he thinks about the years since Allie left New Bern while she bathes, dresses, and gets her courage together to go see Noah. During the worst of the Great Depression, Noah went up north to find work. He got a job at a scrapyard owned by the kind Morris Goldman, who liked Noah. After Noah came back from fighting in World War II, he found that Morris had left him a big chunk of the business. With that money, Noah bought the farmhouse and the land around it. For the past 11 months, he's worked non-stop to fix up the property. Noah does his daily tasks, takes a shower, and then sits on the porch, lost in thought. When he sees a car coming down the drive, he is shocked. When Allie gets out of the car, there is even more shock. Allie and Noah stand and stare at each other for a while before they happily hug. When Allie tells Noah that she found the story, she tells him how great his work is. She says she's sorry for showing up out of the blue, but Noah tells her he's glad to see her. Allie tells Noah she is getting married, and then the two of them walk to the river. Allie tells Noah about Lon, but Noah can tell that she isn't sure what to say. Allie says yes when Noah asks her to stay for dinner. Allie and Noah keep talking about their summer together while they take a tour of the house and make dinner. That's why Allie says she never got Noah's letters when he asks her why she never answered his letters. Soon, Allie figures out that her mother and must have taken the letters because she didn't like Noah because he was from a lower social class. If Noah had asked Allie if she thinks they'd still be together if she had seen the letters, she would have said yes. Noah then asks Allie about Lon and her love of painting. Allie tells him that she stopped doing art even though she went to college for it. Noah shows Allie that he hung a picture she gave him a long time ago over the fireplace in the living room. He tells her that she is a real artist and that she should try painting again. It occurs to Allie over dinner that she and Lon never talk as easily as she does with Noah. Allie feels a sexual stirring inside her while Noah reads her poems on the porch after dinner. She thinks that she doesn't feel this way about Lon. Allie quickly leaves because she is too busy. Noah asks her to come back the next day as he walks her to her car. Allie says yes and goes back to the inn, but she doesn't know that Lon has been calling her room all night. While Allie and Noah are having their own mornings the next day, they can't help but think about each other. Every morning, Noah goes kayaking while Allie goes to a department store to get some art materials and draw a few things quickly. Allie drives out to Noah's house at noon, and Noah tells her he's taking her somewhere special. Allie goes with Noah to the river and gets into his boat. 
As they paddled down the river, they thought about their wonderful summer together again. Ali should close her eyes when Noah goes off-roading into a small lake. She opens them again to find that Noah has taken them to a quiet cove where there are hundreds of swans. Ali and Noah see thunder and lightning coming after they feed the birds. Even though they start to row home, the storm stops them. At this point, Ali and Noah are so wet that they can't even stand it. Again at the house, Ali and Noah sit by the fireplace with a drink in their hands and talk about the summer of 1932. Ali asks Noah if he remembers having sex at the end of the summer. They both can't hold back their feelings any longer. The two are so in love that they have sex by the fire. At the same time, Lon asks for a break in the case he's working on back in Raleigh. He tells the judge that he needs to take care of important business over the weekend. The judge tells him to be back by Monday at 9 a.m. Lon agrees to do what the judge says and quickly gets into his car to start the trip to New Bern. Ali and Noah are in the kitchen the next morning when the doorbell rings. When Noah goes to answer it, he is shocked to see in Nelson, Ali's mother. Noah opens the door for and and sits down with her in the living room with Ali and tells Ali that she has been noticing that Ali has been acting strangely for weeks and knew it had to be because of the story about Noah, and tells Ali that Lon is on his way. He called the house last night, very upset because he knew what Ali was doing in New Bern, and tells Ali to follow her heart as she decides what to do with her life before she leaves. She gives Ali the letters from Noah. Noah asks Ali what she wants to do after and goes. She tells him that she doesn't want to hurt or upset anyone. But Noah is adamant that Ali should do what she wants and live a life that doesn't make her constantly think about the past and what might have been. Noah tells Ali that he knows she won't stay when she starts to cry. He helps her get into her car and walks her there. He tells her he loves her before she starts the car, but Ali doesn't look back as she drives away. The whole way to the inn, Ali keeps crying. She sees Lon's car in the parking lot when she gets there. As she thinks about what to say to Lon, she turns off the car and reads Noah's last letter to her, which is from March 1935. Allie reads Noah's last note and finds that she knows exactly what to say. She walks into the inn with a plan. In the future, the story goes back to the frame story. Noah closes the notebook when he's done reading it. His female friend, who we now know to be Ali, finds the story comforting and asks Noah if he wrote it himself. Noah says it's true, even though he didn't write it. Ali tells Noah she wants to ask him a question but doesn't want to upset him, so she asks him who he is. Noah gets lost in his thoughts as he thinks about the wonderful life he and Ali built together. Ali is a famous painter and has four children and many grandkids. But most days, her Alzheimer's disease keeps her from remembering any of this. But Noah still reads to Ali every day to help her remember things and spend some quiet time with her. In his free time, Noah likes to read old letters and look at old pictures to remember good times. Ali agrees to go for a walk when Noah asks her to one day. As they walk around the nursing home grounds together, Ali keeps asking questions about the story and about Noah's own life. Ali tells Noah that she thinks she has a secret fan because she often finds songs and notes in her coat pockets or under her pillow. Ali's room is set up with a candlelit dinner for the two of them, and Noah laughs as he takes her back up. There is a lot of love between Noah and Ali, and the nurses want to help him win her heart every chance they get. As Ali and Noah eat dinner and listen to music on the radio, Ali tells Noah she loves him and has always loved him. They have a couple of wonderful hours eating and talking together, but soon Ali starts to fade away again. She starts to scream for help and can't recognize Noah. The nurses come down the hall, drug her, and take Noah out of her room. Noah goes through a few lonely, foggy days without Ali. One morning, he is going through old letters again when he feels pain, goes numb, and loses his sight. He knows he is having a stroke. Noah has been intubated and going in and out of awareness for two weeks. He is now finally ready to go back to the nursing home. He loses himself for hours in old letters, 
pictures, and memories on his first night back before stumbling down the hall to Ali's room. He has missed her so much. Even though Noah shouldn't go see Ali after dark, Janice, the night nurse, lets him go. She tells him how much she admires him and how moved she is by the love between him and Ali. A poem is hidden under Ali's pillow while she sleeps. Noah sits on the edge of the bed in her room. It's impossible for him not to touch her face. Ali wakes up and faces him. Noah is scared that she won't recognize him and will start yelling. But she smiles, calls him by name, tells him how much she's missed him, and starts taking his shirt off. About the author. Nicholas Sparks was born in Omaha, Nebraska. Sparks graduated from Fair Oaks, California's Bella Vista High School as valedictorian, he went to the University of Notre Dame. In 1988, Sparks met his wife and graduated early. Soon after that, they moved to New Bern, North Carolina. Sparks wrote his first book, The Notebook, in his free time while working in the pharmaceutical business. It was set in the town of New Bern. Sparks was a new writer when he sold The Notebook for an advance of $1 million in 1996. The book went straight to the top of the New York Times bestseller list in its first week. This was the start of Sparks' famed career as a romance novelist. Sparks has written more than 20 books, including 11 New York Times bestsellers like A Walk to Remember, Nights in Rodanthe, and The Last Song. Many of her romantic books have been turned into movies. Sparks lives in New Bern, North Carolina. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.